Hello, everybody, and welcome to Taiwan Talk, where we share the stories of people living in Taiwan and Taiwanese people living abroad. I'm Trevor Tordomasi, and joining me in the studio today is Matan Shalomi. Hello. And Matan is a professor of entomology, that's the study of insects, at National Taiwan University, the prestigious National Taiwan University. <laughs> Are you feeling prestigious today, Matan? <laughs> as prestigious as usual. <laughs> okay, so that's a yes. Um, where does the word entomology come from? Why is that the study of insects? Like most things, it comes from the Greek. Uh, entomon meaning insect, and logia study of, I believe, so study of insects. So it's nice. Um, I tell people I'm an entomologist. I'm surprised how many do actually know what that word means. Mm. Uh, otherwise, I usually have to follow up with, oh, it's the study of insects. One time I didn't have to do that was I was in taking a taxi from Athens airport to the city. And the person asked what I do. I say, I'm an entomologist. And he goes, ah, of course. Okay. It was Greek. <laughs> okay. Okay. Of course. Of course. So what else is it that you do at NTU? Not what else. What is it that you do at NTU, rather? Well, I am a professor now, um, an uh, associate professor at entomology. So teaching, research, lots of paperwork. Uh, it feels like running a business, running the lab, because you know I have my students that work for me and staff. And you have to buy equipment and reagents and you keep the bugs alive. And I also do research on that. So it's a lot of administrative stuff that I didn't realize I was going to be doing when I became a scientist. But that's... Uh, what is the balance of sort of like paperwork and writing around the insects as compared to like getting to spend time with the specimens, little critters. Well, luckily now I have grad students who take care of the insects for me. Um, actually, mm -hmm. then it's too many now. We have a big, practically an insect farm in my lab. So we need uh, <laughs> um, undergrads to help. And it's just the, 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 essentially the work that doesn't require a PhD gets brought down to uh, lower and lower in the food chain. So mm -hmm. more and more people, but you end up having more staff working in the lab, um, which is nice. The lab is a, a hive of activity, of human activity. I should oh, say. Yeah. <laughs> Ideally, it's a hive of all kinds, uh, but only where you need it to be. Hmm. Um, of all these people working under you and uh, under your tutelage and sort of like handling the the busy work, if you will, um, is there any of that, that busy work with the insects that you kind of miss now that you're a PhD and you don't have to do it as much? Hmm. Well... I guess more than PhD at this point. Uh, you know, it's fun to play with the bugs. You know, I got into this field so I could, you know, poke them and play with them and, and do, mm -hmm. do all the fun things. Uh, but it is work taking care of them and feeding them. And, you know, it depends obviously which creature. Like, mm -hmm. some of them really doesn't take that much work, others a lot more. Uh, so I'm kind of work. Mosquitoes are annoying because you have to feed them blood, for example. Right. You know, thankfully, my lab isn't working with mosquitoes anymore. But if you do, you don't really have much choice. It has to be blood, it has to be warm. Uh, so either you set Mosquitoes up... Mosquitoes get picky? Well, if it's cold blood, they assume it's from a dead body and they're no longer interested. Hmm. So they're attracted to heat and carbon dioxide and smell of blood. So it has to be warmer. They won't touch it. It's not right. Okay. Can you explain to me why I'm, I'm jumping on so many tangents here, but why is it that some friends, they'll sit down and they won't get bit by any mosquitoes and then I get bitten by all of them? <laughs> and sure. they're just making more carbon dioxide. It's not the carbon dioxide. Um, well, first of all, it could, be, yeah. it could be a smell. Uh, okay. Three things attract mosquitoes, heat, CO2, carbon dioxide, and odor. Mm -hmm. So the microbes on your skin are going to produce a unique odor. That's your odor. Mm -hmm. uh, and that could be attractive to the mosquitoes. You probably notice that you get bitten on your ankles more than other parts of your body. Mm. It's the uh, foot bacteria. There's bacteria that live on your feet in particular. I have a smell that mosquitoes like. Uh, also, Limburger cheese happens mm -hmm. to be very attractive to malaria mosquitoes because it smells like feet. And it literally smells like feet. It literally... So there's... Wow, I didn't think there would finally be scientific proof that Limburger cheese smelled like feet. To okay. a mosquito, it smells like a foot. And they have <laughs> to me, it, it smells like confused. a foot. I feel, I feel finally sort of vindicated. But to continue, there's mm -hmm. so that's one part of it is you may genuinely be more attractive to mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. The other part is they might be getting bitten and just don't realize. Mm, okay. When you get bitten, there is going to be a reaction. Um, and it's a two-part reaction. There's the immediate reaction, and then there's a delayed one. But whether you have either of these depends on you know your how old you are, your current immune system, how experienced your body is with that particular strain of mosquito. So after a while, you're going to not react anymore. Mm. So it could just be that they are getting bitten, but their body has stopped doing the reactions. And so they don't realize they've been bitten. Mm. The body just skips the whole itchy and wealth thing and just 
ignore it. Not important. Skip the itchy, actually, is, is something I'd like to do. All, all the symptoms of mosquito bite are your body's reaction to the saliva and the mosquito. The mosquito doesn't need you to be swollen and itchy. By that point, it's gone. So it's your own body's immune system that gives you the symptoms, and if your body stops doing it, your body stops doing it. So some people... You know, may think they're getting bitten more, they're just reacting more strongly. Uh, speaking of you having studied mosquitoes um, and some uh, bugs in the lab, insects in the lab that are tough to... Or tough to rear. Tough to rear. Um, and you having all these people under your tutelage, um, are any of them also working on their own projects? Okay, so the main direction of our lab now is on the coconut rhinoceros beetle. Mm -hmm. uh, Arictes rhinoceros. It is pretty large. It's about, uh, it's thinking in centimeters. Let's just say it's about two to three inches, uh -huh. whatever that is in centimeters. I'm a terrible scientist. Um, are they native to Taiwan? They are. They are native down south. They live mm. in the palm trees, so they live in the coconut and the beetle nut. Mm. Now, beetle is, you know, sort of a druggy thing, so no one really talks about beetle nut pest control. And coconut is not a big problem for Taiwan. So this beetle is native here. Not really something people worry about. However, in the South Pacific Islands, um, a lot of the countries there... Uh, Solomon Islands, Kiribati, essentially from the South Pacific Islands, coconut may be the big crop there. That mm. is the main source of income for the country. You know? mm. And this beetle eats the coconut trees and kills them. So this beetle is a massive, massive problem, and it happens to be spreading. And it's a big problem, and people really don't like it. So my lab is working on ways to get rid of this horrible beetle. So, uh, in, including um, the things we talked about last time, uh, beetles among them, as well as mosquitoes and some stick insects, um, what have you learned since then? Uh, I don't know if I mentioned we found a new virus. Wow. Or rather, a collaborator looked at our data that we published and said, hey, there's a, a virus in these beetles. It's a new, brand new virus. Um, I believe uh, we, we, co we co authored uh, the description of it. So, it's a new virus in these beetles, currently known only from Taiwan. And currently, all the beetles in Taiwan are infected, or all of the coconut rhinoceros beetles, the species of Rictes rhinoceros in Taiwan, they're all infected. Mm. We don't know what this virus does. It's not 100% fatal, but some of them in our lab do die from what appears to be an infection. It makes the beetles sick, okay. Now, well, before anyone worries, yeah. before anyone worries, this is like so far from anything that can affect a human race. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 nothing. Yeah, this, we don't even know if it affects other beetles. Right, uh, okay. Well. But we do know this new virus. We don't know if it kills them. It may mm -hmm. be killing some of them. It clearly isn't killing all of them. We don't know how it spreads. They're all infected, so it's spreading well, whatever it is. But right. the question is, all right, if we brought this virus from Taiwan to another country, to the Solomon Islands, to Fiji, to Australia, mm -hmm. what will it do to the beetles there that may be of a different biotype, a uh, different population? Maybe it can kill them. Right. There's already a virus that is being used as pest control for these beetles. Um, the Erectus rhinoceros nudivirus... Yeah, so it's already being, you can produce this in a lab in large numbers and essentially spray it, and it will infect the beetles and kill most of them. But there's a population of beetles that is resistant. The ones in Taiwan happen to be this population. Oh, man. Okay. So now that we found there is a virus that infects the, the beetles that are resistant to the other one, well, now we have some something to work with. Maybe a combination of both of these together will knock out everything. Mm. But, you know, these are all hypotheses. we got to see what's actually the case. And that's what my lab's going to do now. So we got a grant from the Ministry of Education, three-year grant to study the virus and understand what does it do to the beetles, how does it spread, what's going on uh, inside these infected creatures. And hopefully, together with my collaborators in Australia and collectors in other countries, we can maybe come up with some new uh, way to kill this beetle. Hmm. And if not, at least we learned new things. Yeah. Um so not to jump too far ahead, but mm -hmm. what kind of projects are you looking forward to in the future? Um, it'll probably come up at some point that I'm teaching a course on edible insects. So Yes, let's go right into that. Sure. I am teaching a course on edible insects. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I'm um, you know, curious what the effects are on the students. So gave the students a survey. We'll see you know, how has the class affected them. So a class about, about eating insects or about uh, taking insects and making them more fun to eat. Um, how how soon into the class curriculum do are people eating like mosquito <laughs> sandwiches? <laughs> of course, everyone who wants to take the class wants to eat the bugs. They're right. Like, <laughs> when will we bring in the insects for? When, when, excuse me. They don't all want to eat it. Some of them are terrified of the concept. But okay. um, there are going to be some who are waiting for the day when I bring in the edible insects, and mm -hmm. they're pretty confident I'm going to do this, and I will. I always plan to do it. The one issue with insects is they are a potential allergen. Some people are allergic, mm. and no real way you can tell if you're allergic to insects other than eat them and find out. Okay, you start, like, you start with one little itty-bitty critter. 
Yeah. Like well, try this mosquito, and then if you can mosquito. handle the, the well, something burger. more delicious. Than oh, okay. That. But you know, it's kind of like peanuts or chocolate. There's right. only one way to find out you're allergic, and that's the hard way. But it's something most people don't have to worry about. Nonetheless, okay. the first time I taught the course, I gave people insects to eat uh, during the midterm, which I don't do anymore. I don't do midterms. Uh, oh, bless you. Well, yeah, no <laughs> point in that. I give them writing assignments. It's mm -hmm. a little bit better. Anyway, gave the students uh, some silkworms to eat at the beginning of the class. By the end of the class, one student was breaking out in hives. Oh. Turns out she had no idea, but she was allergic to insects. And to had, insects in general. Now, where does that allergen come well, from? She may have been allergic to silkworms only. I don't know. Um, oh, it's very common for people who are allergic to shellfish, like shrimp um, and crustaceans. Okay. They are very related to insects. And so if you're allergic to shrimp, I would actually say you are probably allergic to insects and maybe should not try it. This girl was not allergic to shrimp. Not She didn't have any other food allergies. Her body just doesn't react well to silkworm. I'm not sure if you still have to tell a doctor about that if they ask if you're allergic to anything and you say silk, <laughs> silkworms. Probably not. Well, uh, what other kinds of insects are you cooking up in that class? It's hard to find them here. That's the problem. It's uh, hard to source the the actual insects you're saying. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Well, because, you know, I'm not going to go and collect things from nature right. and, you know, deal with all the processing. I yeah, want yeah. something that's a little bit easier for me to cook as a person who can't cook. Mm. Uh, so what I did this year was I got um, silkworm, canned silkworm mm -hmm. from a Korean store, uh, you know, Korean grocery store in Shimen had the canned silkworm pupae, which is something you can get on the streets in uh, in Korea. Mm -hmm. And I found a recipe online on how to roast them with some spices, you know, drain it, soak it a few times, marinate it, roast it, cook that up for my students. I also ordered from Thailand boxes of silkworm snacks, uh, okay. you know, with, you know, all the artificial flavors and whatever, whatnot that you get in uh, snack food and brought that into the class and shared it with people. Which insect has been the most delicious to you so far? You know, it's like any other thing. It depends how it's cooked. Mm -hmm. You know, you could eat a you know chicken that's just horrible, and that's not going to be a black mark on chickens. Right. Uh, I think some of the more interesting ones are unfortunately going to be a lot harder to find. Deli the delicacies. Let's put it this way: I wouldn't buy them for you know two hundred person class. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And what would that be like? Oh, there's well, lots of nice things. Uh, there is in Japan. Mm -hmm. There's something they call uh, zazamushi. Z a z a mushi. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 actually a couple of different insects that live in the stream. It's one stream in uh, Nagano Prefecture. Very clean water up uh, in the mountains. Cold, clean water where you have stone flies and other insects. Mm. Where the nymphs live in the water. And during I think I want to say February, that's the season for it. And you can go and you can harvest them, and collect them, cook them, brine them. You can buy uh, cans of this stuff. They've been cooked in soy sauce. Uh, but they still have sort of a, a fishy flavor because they're aquatic, right? So okay. they taste kind of like like a like a river fish in a, in a good way. Hmm. So you know it's an insect, but it's it's fishy, and not just uh, insects too. You also have eaten tarantulas. I have eaten tarantulas. Also, yeah. definitely not something I would bring in for the class. Right. I expect <laughs> that's probably a little bit more expensive. Also, the bigger they get, the more I would, like find myself worrying about the the morality of I don't know, not the morality, but I like. See. You know, if it's a mosquito squish, I don't even care. If it's a big tarantula, I'm like, oh, he's, he, he be, he's I see what you big, mean. Yeah. yeah, if it's that big, you're not going to squish something big because it can look at you and, and make you feel bad. <laughs> yeah, because it can look at me yeah. and make me it's feel all, bad. You know, it'll give you all the sad puppy dog eyes, all, uh -huh. eight, of, all eight of them staring up at you. <laughs> yeah, four times the power of a dog. You know, it's, it's soft and it's cuddly. It's got fur. It's uh -huh. fuzzy. You don't want to kill something soft and fuzzy and small, right? They are fuzzy. They're very fuzzy. <laughs> they do have sharp fangs. I yes. guess dogs are fuzzy and have sharp fangs too, so yeah, yeah, yeah. what's the problem? Well, the solution is, of course, eat dog. Okay, and I have a lot to think about now. <laughs> Moving on. Um, so what has been the most successful point of persuasion in getting someone over the hill and trying to eat insects? Eating insects. Give it to them and go, do it, do it. Do it. Okay, it's do that easy. It. It's, no, I won't say it's that easy, but that works for some people. Uh, you know, not everyone wants to try new things, and I will just guilt them and make them feel bad for not trying things. I don't know. Uh, you know, I'll pick one up and eat it myself to show them that, yes, this is edible, this is possible. Uh, maybe for some people it's a bridge too far, and I'm, you know, that's not who I am. I'm very curious. I always want to try new food. A, so mi I, a midge too far? 
<sighs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I feel like proud of myself, but then also I, I realize that you've probably heard every single bug related joke. You know, I've not heard that one. I think it's just so terrible. No one has ever made it. Okay, before. cool, 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 cool. That's all. That's all you. Enjoy. <laughs> and Enjoy moving, on, moving on, moving um, <laughs> on. So you, des you described the insect apocalypse as a major loss of insect biodiversity, insect habitats, um, as a result of human effects on the environment. Um, but has this affected the priority of what you are studying? Mm. It has not directly, not my work, because this seems to be happening across the board. And you know what? What really can we can we do about it? Uh, there Except are... waggle your finger at humans, but like that's not really yeah. yeah. You know, can we slowing development is not really that simple. Mm. You know, there is a lot of hope that we should be collecting more from parts of the world that have not been researched, but also that are heavily threatened. You know, air, there are some of the pristine, beautiful rainforests that we really don't know what lives there. And there's probably a whole amount of biodiversity that's unexplored are the areas that are going to be cut down for an oil palm plantation. So, you know, preserve what we have and study it quickly. So get people out there and collect and see what we find because we are pro probably losing species faster than we're describing them. What kind of a rate is that? Like a species a day? How many species are being... We might be describing a species. For insects, uh, again, the number of insects is immense. So we're actually it's actually not that hard to describe a new species of insect to, or to find one even. Wow. There's okay. probably undescribed species in your average entomology museum. You just need someone to sit down and go through the rather long and complicated process of describing it. Uh, but extinction is happening quick. And mm. it's the parts of the world where... You know, there's the most deforestation are the ones where the diversity is the most insane. Like a single tree could have a unique species in some of these rainforests. They're big trees, big old trees. But, you know, a whole acre of forest could have, you know, thousands, tens of thousands, maybe millions of individuals to say nothing of species. So every acre that we lose is a significant amount of, of life that's lost. So we are probably we're certainly losing at least one species a day. All right. Um, and uh, finally, finishing it off, is there anything you'd like to say to the people of Taiwan? Uh, sure. They're try to eat more in insects. Uh, there are some Taiwanese edible insects that have you know, been part of the diet here for a long time. Uh, bees and uh, the big wasps. Actually, the really big one, the murder mm -hmm. hornet. You got to like destinger them before you eat each one. Well, the adults, uh, you don't eat the adults. Uh, but the, oh, the larvae. The larvae thing. Yeah, okay. the larvae and the pupa, which don't have a stinger. Huh. That's the thing. There's a, I saw a video online, a, a video, a Taiwanese video of they got a big nest. Mm -hmm. They take the nest, put it in a bag, open the bag over a big bottle of galleon. And the fumes kill all the adults. The adults just fall into the galleon. And now you have galleon with wasps in it, which is already... Its own kind of... Its own kind of thing. Sort of experience. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. But then you have the nest with just the larvae and pupa, and you can one by one open it up, pry them out, um, I think get them, and then fry them up. A lot of work, but it is, you know, a local Taiwanese edible insect. And I was surprised going into my teaching the class. I didn't know much about edible insects in Taiwan, and the students didn't know either. Mm. So it was fun to learn about this and share with them. It's like, hey, here's something that has been on this island for a long time. Mm -hmm. Well, you can learn just as much from what you're teaching as you can from what you're researching. Um, and I guess if we have anything else to tell people, it's that you shouldn't be as afraid of bugs as you probably are. <laughs> um, and there's lots of ones that you can eat too, so they might want to be more afraid of you. Um, thanks again to Matan Shalomi for coming in today. Oh, thank you for having me. And this has been a Taiwan Talk. Until next time, I'm Trevor Tortomasi on ICRT FM 100.